announcing the support and as well. Appreciate Delta Hustle's effort. All right, anyone else in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the measure? Mr. Chairman. Delegate Helsley, you, sir. you need a last word? No, sir. There's no opposition or none, no, sir. Is, none is voice. Uh, Delegate Lopez. Make a motion. Make a motion. Take the vote. Second. And uh, as the substitute. Yes. Yes. Okay. First uh, uh, motion made and seconded to report to the <coughs> substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Chairman, I can apologize to the committee for monopolizing your time, uh, but I do appreciate it. <coughs> Taking the time to hear these bills, I think you yep. you've done a lot of good this afternoon. I believe. Thank you, thank you so much. Too. Okay, um, round two. Okay, delegate Hodges. Oh, thank you. So, Lead Commissioner, I need you to stand up for my bill too. Then we'll all sing some by. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have um, House Bill 1774, and there is a substitute. I believe Mr. Meachin passed. Mm -hmm. Substitute. Okay, is there a motion on I'm sorry. Properly motion is second to yeah, substitute. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. <coughs> uh, substitute for force. Delegate Hodges. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now we're going to deal with another favorite subject, stormwater. Here we go. Been dealing with it for years now, and actually, over the course of the year, I've been working very hard with numerous stakeholders, many folks, on trying to solve many of the problems with, with stormwater in the commonwealth. Uh, we actually had the, the Virginia Coastal Policy Center um, work very hard and work with me um, to do a survey of folks throughout the state and we identified a number of problems. We tried to get, get back um, information from each of those folks on where they stood on these problems and also to come back not only with that but ways to resolve these problems. Now, there were some things identified in there. It's, it's, it's on their website. You can go and take a look at, um, at, the, at, the, at the, um, what they published. It's a good document. And one of the um, solutions actually went before committee already, dealing with third party engineers. But what this really forced us to do was it forced us to have discussions about stormwater that we've never had before. We often get stuck in our silos and continue on a path with trying to fix a problem or fix three very complex um, statutes between ENS, Stormwater, and Chesapeake Bay. Now, in having these conversations and working on this, I had a few goals. Number one, the infamous donut hole, which is under the Chesapeake Bay Act, where the lands disturbance is between 2,500 square feet and an acre. Those of us, especially on the rural coastal areas, know how difficult it is for our local governments. Um, to implement that. If they don't have the expertise over an acre, how do you expect them to do that from 2,500 square feet to an acre? We also want to find a way really to keep the localities in charge of our local local um, development and, you know, it's still at the same time have some economic growth. Now, one of the things we came up with when we were really trying to think out of the box to solve this is the idea of stormwater banks. We're doing it now with nutrient, nutrient but we're not doing it on volume like we really should. So we came up with the idea with, well, BDOT water currently, we're not doing anything with that. Millions of gallons. Just in Matthews County, 
my calculations are correct. Twenty foot hard, just a hard surface road on a mile in Matthews County is three million gallons of water a year. Then you expand that up to forty foot right away. Then the private land, all of this dirty water that has oil and trash and going through the sediment. It's all going straight to our waterways. So the idea was to create these stormwater banks and remove that beat out water, then create these rural development growth areas where you can say, instead of moving forward with the expanded stormwater um, the way we're, we're, we're moving forward with, kind of relax that to the MS-19 and be able to offset and trade. So I mean, just for instance, for every million gallons, you can have a thousand gallons you can trade. It's a, it's a huge amount of water. <coughs> This has the potential to be a game changer for the quality of water in Chesapeake Bay, a game changer for economic development, but also in addition to help with the problems with flooding and recurrent flooding because one of the major problems that we have is VDOT ditches, VDOT fall ditches that are clogged up, it's colonial infrastructure that's been there and it's causing major problems. It's a safety issue, it's causing problems all across the Commonwealth. So really this, this concept that we came up with it was moving forward, it was later in the year, back in the fall, we were trying to come up with legislation to make that. And as you know, the three complex statutes, to get all of those pieces moving together, everyone seemed to think, hey, we can make this happen, how can we get there? But we couldn't kind of fit all of the pieces together. So we were also looking for a way with DQ, um, very helpful, you know, working through this, to possibly save them as far as, in, in the long run, the administering program. VDOT, fiscal impact long term, saving them money economic development, money coming into the state treasury. So the problem was we couldn't get all the pieces quite working quite together. And, you know, we, we said, you know, we didn't want to cause a fiscal impact to <coughs> the but the, the coast, the, I always forget the name of it, the Commonwealth Center for Recurrent Flooding and Resiliency was created by this, this came through this committee last year. It fits in perfectly for that group to come together. It brings in BIM, so it brings the science, it brings Old Dominion, which has the hydrologic engineers, and it brings in the Coastal Policy Center at the William and Mary School of Law, which has the policy piece. So we'll bring all of those pieces together through the center to create this group of stakeholders. We work with the stakeholders, and it, and it basically is saying, look, guys, y'all come up with this model to benefit the Commonwealth. And if you look at when the, the center was created, actually the the, the center will convene the work group. The policy center will convene the group. Um, and the center actually is responsible for reporting back to us with the model. And if you look in the, the statute last year when, when the center was created, um, provide training, technical and non-technical services, outreach, where, where is it, hold on. Um, Serve, advise, and support the Commonwealth by conducting interdisciplinary studies and investigations, which is exactly what this is doing. So this, you know, we've got all of those folks on board to be able to do this, and this has the potential to be a game changer, Mr. Chairman, and members of the committee, for a positive outcome for our waterways and, and for economic development, and hopefully our state agencies as well. So that's where we are. And also, in addition to that, we got everyone on board to extend the provisions of last year's bill um, until January 1st of 2018 while we come up with this fix, which, because what you're doing is with that donut hole, this can possibly close that donut hole because we're building a better match track. And, build, and there's another donut hole from 10,000 square feet. To the so that's where we are, folks. Okay. Any questions? Does this have a fiscal impact? It does. No, it does not. It's, re it's removed. Actually, the original bill had a fiscal impact. And I'm, I'm sorry, DQ so will still, re re well, this is the substitute, so it won't show. Um, actually, the, the, <coughs> the fiscal impact, because it is now going to the center, will be doing this, and the Coastal Policy Center will um, convene the group, and they have the dollars to do it. DQ will still be at the table and assist, and we have, uh, we talked to them as well, and they're on board to be able to tell them. So that language actually removes the, the fiscal impact. So that's where we are. Okay, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to speak in favor of the measure? Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the measure? <laughs> they were lined up before you gave us a substitute. <laughs> 
Um, it's, I'm speaking to the substitute. Yes. Peggy Sander, <coughs> Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I first want to thank Delegate Hodges for his careful uh, attention to the perspectives of a wide range of uh, stakeholders involved in the many different areas that his original bill uh, raised. Uh, as the uh, committee is aware, these issues are not just potentially game changers, as Delegate Hodges suggested, but they're also highly complex, raising technical questions, legal questions, policy questions. Uh, for those reasons, we very much appreciate the vehicle that's proposed in the substitute, which is a work group. Uh, and we think, um, obviously, with the members of the community that have been cited in the substitute, um, lots of expertise would be at the table. So we appreciate um, the efforts of the delegate and uh, support the substitute bill. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my colleague runs with the Virginia Municipal League. We appreciate Doug Hodges' work on, on, on this behalf and this very important issue. We support this legislation. Look forward to working with all the stakeholders on, on behalf of our localities. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, member of the subcommittee, I'm Larry Land, representing Virginia Association of Counties. We really do appreciate this extremely important issue. Um, I'm, and I do have high hopes that this is uh, that what comes out of this will benefit rural counties throughout the state. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Adrian Patola, James River Association. We appreciate the delegate working with all of the stakeholders on this issue and look forward to the workers over the next year. Thank you. Shannon Varney here on behalf of Resource Environmental Solutions. It's a mitigation provider for uh, wetland streams, nutrients, and uh, look forward to working on this. Study work. 